This is review of my bike. What is it? For me, it's a gravel bike. Some may call it a monster cross. I've built it around an expensive Chinese 650B carbon mountain bike frame a year ago and did, let's say, 2000 kilometers in this year. It is 11 speed, has hydraulic disc brakes. The complete bike, as you see it right now, is 8850 grams without pedals, which is pretty damn good weight for a $1200 bike, I would say. I should point out, I'm using relatively heavy tires and Shimano SLX rear derailleur with an adapter. It can easily be 4 or 500 grams lighter. My height is exactly 180 centimeters. This bike feels slightly bigger than I need. Right now I have 80 mil stem and bike feels a tiny bit too playful. The handling is more stable and overall better with 90 mil stem but it is less comfortable for me. It is just nice to have category and not a big deal at all. I like this bike a lot. It feels amazing. For me, it is 100% satisfaction. It is surprisingly comfortable for a rigid bike. This frame has extremely short seat tube. That's very common with all MTB frames nowadays. You need space to accommodate dropper seat post. My carbon seat post sticks out a whopping 26 cm. A long carbon seat post can provide a lot of flex. Let me show you how flexible this seat post actually is. But don't be mistaken, it is not easy to make it flex that way. I have to put almost all my weight on the saddle. I pump my tires up to 45 psi so they wouldn't deflect that much and you can see the seat post movement better. In a real world scenario, your weight is distributed between handlebars, saddle and pedals so you would get that kind of flex only when you hit something big. I'm not going to talk about bike geometry too much here. It is a big topic and it deserves a separate video. In this video, I just want to show my bike and list all the components. So, how this bike is different from a proper gravel bike? It uses post-mount brakes and all gravel, cyclocross and road bikes comes with flat mount brakes now. It's getting harder to find post mount brakes for road each year and top of the line road brakes are not offered with post mount standard. Q factor is larger because it's an MTB Q factor. Some may prefer it being smaller which goes with gravel or road bikes. It's not all that important for me at least. My bottom bracket drop is too small at 50 mils. It is pretty high and there is no gravel or even a cyclocross bike with a BB drop that small that I'm aware of. I actually prefer it that way. The high clearance means no pedal strikes. It is much easier to ride off camber trails or clear obstacles. I hate pedal strikes. If I get a single pedal strike on a ride, I just lose all my confidence and would be constantly over cautious for the rest of the ride. Also, with a high bottom bracket, you can pedal in a turn and accelerate out of turn. And that's really fun. It is supposedly makes bike less stable at higher speeds. Can't really tell. To me, it feels really stable at any speed. And I can ride very slippery. I mean, snow and ice here. Or sandy trails with ease. Higher bottom bracket makes harder to get on and off the bike. The saddle is 1 or 2 cm higher in comparison to a proper gravel. If you are a shorter rider, it would affect you even more. You can fall if you stop on an off camber section and lean to the wrong side. If you are a shorter rider. It doesn't affect me that much though. This frame allows me to run any tire up to let's say 2.6 inches. With a normal cross country tire, I have ton of space between chain stays and seat tube for mud and god knows what to get through. On some gravel bikes, you have so little space there, you can easily damage your frame by some rocks getting picked up by the tire. The frame is not the highest quality, but it is good enough and insane value for the money. I've inspected it 
on the inside and it looks pretty decent. I didn't see any resin pooling or weirdly compacted or sticking out carbon. Honestly, I would say 4 stars out of 5. The frame is well thought through and designed with comfort in mind. The top tube and seat stays are flattened. This translates into more compliance. Chain stays are asymmetrical to accommodate a bigger chain ring and that's important. You need a big chain ring on a gravel bike if you are running a one by. Right now I have 40 tooth one. The bottom bracket is BSA. It is a single piece and that's good. There is P30 option available too. My advice, stay away from P30. For my gravel bike build, I'm using the smallest frame size available and it is still slightly too big for me. Isn't it curious? Anyway, the frame is somewhat popular. Many people bought it to build an MTB bike. It is getting tested in an MTB environment. I haven't seen a single report of a broken frame as of yet. That gives me confidence. There is at least one issue with this frame though. Inner seat tube diameter is way out of spec. They screwed this up. And it is not just this one frame. I built a bike for my wife. It has the same problem. It is very common with Chinese carbon frames. The solution is to use shim. I'm actually using thin aluminum sheet made of a beer can. Plus a special second clamp on a seat post. Works great. Also, there is an issue with the stock seat post clamp. It was biting into a seat post. I had to grind away some material to prevent any damage to a seat post. Be aware. I'm using Chinese EXF cranks. Great value with 35 bucks for cranks and a bottom bracket. For a cassette I'm using Shimano XT1140. A big regret here. I should have gone with Strum 1042 cassette and XD hub. I'm constantly spinning out on a tarmac with 11 tooth cock and 40 tooth chain ring. On a gravel bike you are absolutely need that 10 tooth cog. I'm going to upgrade soon. It is very easy to swap Shimano Freehub with Strum XD1 on a Nova Tech Hub. And a Freehub is just 30 bucks. I'm running a mountain bike Shimano SLX rear derailleur. I'm using a special adapter to pair it with a road shifter. It is 3D printed out of PLA plastic. I have designed it myself. I'm going to upload all models to Athenaverse so anyone could print it at home for free. It held fine at least for a year without any issues. The shifting is ok, but I wouldn't call it ideal though. I can feel a little bit more friction when shifting. I wouldn't actually recommend using it. When I've designed it, JRX Group hasn't been available yet and with JRX Real Derailleur there is no need for any adapters anymore. The one thing I absolutely love about this adapter is that it shows me my currently selected speed. I find it very useful and I will miss it because I'm planning to upgrade very soon. Chinese carbon seat post. It has titanium bolts, very lightweight. Chinese carbon saddle. A copy of a specialized power saddle. I find it comfortable and it works well with the bike. Chinese MTB carbon fork. Really beefy one. The fork is very popular, much more popular than the frame. A lot of people bought it to replace suspension forks on their mountain bikes, so it's getting a lot of abuse out there. I don't expect any troubles from it. For handlebars, I'm using 3T Ergonova copy. I cannot recommend those bars, they are not designed for off-road use. Those bars are the most sketchy component on this bike. The actual shape is very comfortable though. Just love the shape. They are kind of flexible. For some, it would be a disadvantage. I actually like it. I have tried alloy bars, which are way stiffer. They are just so much less comfortable. I can feel all the road chatter on my hands. For shifters, I'm using non-serious Shimano ones. Brakes are post-mount type. It's kind of Altegra level. Those were the least expensive hydraulic disc brakes and shifters for road at the time. You can probably still find them on eBay. You are absolutely have to have hydraulic brakes for, for a gravel bike. The braking performance is just beyond beautiful. I used to run 180 front rotor at first, but I have swapped it with 
160 rotor. I have all the stopping power and modulation I need with it. I have two wheel sets, one with carbon rims and the other one with alloy rims. I'm using Novatec hubs and pillar spokes for both. No issues with hubs, spokes or rims as of yet. The carbon rims are from a Chinese company next to The funny thing, they are 20 grams heavier than alloy ones, but I think they are much much stronger. Carbon rims are considerably stiffer than alloy ones. This translates into more precise and responsive handling, but because of the stiffness they are less comfortable. I would say the wider the tire you have, the less stiffness of a rim plays any role. The main reason I bought those, they, are, they will stay true almost forever and I hate truing wheels. At first I was using Schwalbe G1 Speed 650B 1.5 inch tires. They are just too narrow for a gravel road. I was constantly afraid to damage my rims. You need a lower tire pressure for a rough trail, for traction and comfort, and with those tires and lower tire pressure, you can bottom out pretty easy. Also, my bike got lower 1.5 cm, so effectively my bottom bracket got lower 1.5 cm. I immediately started having more pedal strikes because of my riding style. On a tarmac, you feel amazing though. They are really fast and you can appreciate all the stiffness of a carbon rim. The bike looks so ugly with those. No one will call my bike a looker, but with those skinny tires it was just disgusting. Right now I have Maxxis Refuse 650B 2 inch tires. I'm using tubeless setup. They are quite heavy but offer a reasonable puncture protection. They are much, much better on a gravel road and still pretty fast on a tarmac. If it's dry, I would always pick this wheel set. The alloy rims are Stan No Tubes Crest Mark III. Lightweight, relatively inexpensive rims. Not really all that durable. A lot of people having issues with those. Rider weight limit for them is only 86 kilos. But regardless, I haven't had any issues with them so far. Alloy rims in general are more compliant and offer more comfortable ride and actually a better choice for a gravel bike. I'm using Continental Speed King 650B 2.2 inch tires for this wheel set. I just love those tires but they have a lot of drawbacks. No puncture protection. They have very soft compound. No good for longevity. Not suitable for tubeless setup. I've tried and it is nightmare. But they are really fast on a gravel road or a single track. Noticeably faster and more comfortable than Maxis ones. I was riding whole winter on packed snow and ice. I was amazed how much grip they have. On a tarmac they are the slowest ones. But the handling makes up for everything. I can link the bike all I want and it feels very stable. I just want to torn all the time with those tires. It feels so nice.